All right, guys, you got to check this out. On one hand, I can be an alien from another planet. Or I can be the strongest man on Earth. <laughs> or how about a cute and adorable Pixar robot with all this personality? The truth is, I'm actually Superman. <laughs> that sounds so stupid. <laughs> Hello friends of Open Arts. I was super excited when I knew we were getting this model and what you just saw is Runway Act 2. Act 2 allows you to animate characters using driving performance videos. Basically you can act out a scene and a character reference whether it's image or video. Act 2 will transfer that movement to your character bringing them to life with realistic motion, speech and expression. You can create up to 30 seconds of video and it supports typical aspect ratios. Some things to keep in mind while using it. Ensure the subject's face remains visible throughout the video. Frame the subject at furthest from the waist up. You want to make sure you have decent lighting so that it can capture defined facial features and expressions. So let's jump right in and head over to the video tab. We're going to click on that and you can find the feature within the side panel here. We're just going to open it up and then you'll see action sync video. Now at the time of recording this video, it's currently in our test system. So anything you see may change and this may even be called something else. And the way this works is pretty simple. You see we have Runway Act 2 here. The first section here is going to be where you import the character that you want to add motion to, right? And then the bottom is where you would import your source video. The examples you saw in the beginning, I recorded all of those locally. However, we do have an option here where you can record a video right on OpenArt. We're going to select Record Video. You'll see this pop-up box to give access to your camera and your mic. And then you just have to select allow while visiting the site or allow this time. Totally up to you. This recording screen will pop up and you just simply have to click record. I'm just going to do a quick example and I'm going to add a little motion. Just be a little exaggerated. Ho ho ho. <laughs> you can preview it by clicking on play. So let's see that. And I'm going to add a little motion, just be a little exaggerated. <laughs> and then we'll click on confirm. You'll see that it uploads a video here. One thing I want you to keep in mind when you're creating the image or video to animate, to go along with your reference video, let me make this bigger. Act 2 will work best if your starting frame is in a pose or position that mimics your reference video. And the easiest way to do this is to do a screen capture. So I'm just going to select print screen here on my keyboard. And depending on your system and, you know, whether you're a PC, Mac, or maybe you have a screen capture program, whatever screen capture tool you have, go ahead and grab that frame. Then we're going to head over to image and I'm going to open this in a new tab. For the model, I suggest you use either Nano Banana or Seed Dream. In this case, I'm going to use Seed Dream. And then we're simply going to bring in that frame here and use it as a reference image. And within the prompt, you just want to describe your character. I'm just going to do something fun and silly, and we'll make a funny looking hairy gorilla with a big smile. <laughs> and I ended up with this image. Now the hands aren't exactly where they were in my image, but it's a good starting point. So we'll go with that back to using runway act two. So now we're going to select the image. I'm going to click on history. We'll select the image. And the only other option you have is the expression intensity and it goes from one to five. Three is usually a good default. And obviously the lower you put it, the less expressive it's going to be. And if you want more of an exaggerated expression, you could bring it all the way up to five. So I'll do three examples of that one at three. We're going to do another one at one, and then we're going to do another one at five. All right, the videos are done. Let's take a look. Now, in case you're wondering when I created the image, you could state a different background like I did in the intro. I just didn't bother for this example. So let's take a look at the first one. And I'm going to add a little motion, just be a little exaggerated. Ho, ho, ho. 
As you can see, it fits the resource video that we recorded earlier. The motion is seamless. Even if you look at the eyes and the mouth, it does mimic the gestures, okay? So again, this is at setting three. But even at setting one, you see that the motion and gesture still look natural. Really depends on how much motion or gestures there are in your resource video. I went a little overboard to kind of make a point. So it still looks pretty decent. I find typically you're going to use between one to three, depending on your scene. And then the setting at five here, you'll see more exaggeration in the face and expressions, kind of the hands too. But in this case, it worked pretty well. There's no tearing in the image, but that could happen. And I'm going to show you an example. Here's a quick little test I did. And if you look at the character here, you see his nose only has two small holes there for its nose. And it turned out pretty good. But with a setting of five, you see that it gave it an extra mouth. It actually took my mouth and kept the original mouth. So kind of weird there. Now, the other thing you can do is bring in props. I use this glass sphere, which is typically used for photography. And I recorded myself kind of just playing around with it. You'll see that the finger gets lost in here. I'm trying to juggle it. So the sphere doesn't actually, you know, jump from hand to hand. But as you saw just a second ago there, we'll come back to it here. The one thing I found really interesting that it does still honor the depth of field. So watch when I bring it towards the camera. See how it goes out of focus and then comes back in focus. That was pretty interesting. But you will notice that I'm going to lose a finger. So we start with four, now we have three, but then it comes back. So it's not always going to be perfect when it comes to certain details. In this quick example, I took the classic scene from the movie 300 where Leonidas yells, this is Sparta. And I brought it into Seed Dream. I took a screenshot just as I showed you earlier on, used it as a reference, and just prompted make the image 2D anime. And as a result, we got this. And then I also did a 3D CGI version. And this is the result of using those resources. This is Sparta! This is Sparta! I initially intended on recreating that scene. It's about 20 to 30 seconds, but I was running into some hiccups because again, this is still on the test system, but I think you get the idea. Now, one thing it's not good with is fast motion. I screen captured some footage of Bruce Lee doing his nunchucks, and this is what I got. So obviously it's not great. There's no chain connecting the nunchucks. And although the hand and arm movements are pretty decent, it just doesn't pick up the nunchucks very well. You'll notice with quick or fast motion, especially when handling objects, likely not going to work too well. And the other limitation is that you are only limited to one character at a time. However, you can do some creative editing where let's say you have a scene in a park. Theoretically, what you can do is crop out a character, animate the one character first and do the second and then do some post-production after the fact. Let me know in the comments below if you want to learn how to do multi-character with Act 2. And I could see a very real use case for something like AI avatars using Runway Act 2 as well. Speaking of AI avatars, recently I posted a video on how to create one on open art. Make sure you check it out right here. Until that next video, my friends, happy creating.